I nearly rip it off within a month of having it. It's my first rear wheel drive car and with it only being a 1.6, it's still a little bit tail happy in the wet. And we're coming back from Dalby Forest Mountain Biking Centre, we walked bikes in back and it was absolutely torrential. It was bouncing down, there were like that much standing water on the road. <laughs> and I took roundabout a little bit fast and it, it stepped out and then it were out again here out again. I've never been sideways in a car before, and it went wrong side of the road and everything, and that was that was scary. You know, one of them where you just you just all you all just shut up because it was really scary. And then about five minutes later, you're all absolutely pissing yourself laughing about it. That was that could have been really nasty. I suppose it's a bit funny now. <laughs> I'm Anthony Rowling and this is my E30 Touring um, turbo diesel. I'm not sure really, it just kind of, it just kind of it just kinda happened. Um, I've been really into mountain biking all my life and friends that I've made through mountain biking have all also got into cars um, and it's sort of stemmed from that really. This, this is my, this is my first cool car. <laughs> Um, before this, I had a 1.1 litre Saxo, which was just like a really cheap first car, which got absolutely trashed. Um, did Ed on that, that were bad. And after that, I had a Suzuki Wagoner that looked like a toaster. <laughs> um, and I just, just used them for just throwing bikes in and driving about skate parks and riding centres and stuff like that. And that's why I really wanted an estate when I first got this, because I wanted to get the bikes in. When I first passed my tests, uh, one of my friends had a Mark II Golf and was absolutely in love with the retro shape of it, the squareness and the round headlights. I really wanted a car that had round headlights. <laughs> and that was like pretty much top of my shopping list. And then I discovered these existed, the round headlights, the boxy, the square, they had room in the back for bikes and I've just, yeah, it just turned into a really wanting one of these because I couldn't afford a caddy pickup truck. <laughs> Everything looks better with a long roof. I, I like all the states over the two doors and the four door versions. I think everything looks better with a long roof um, and the bike thing as well. Um, love having all that extra room. It's not going to be used for that anymore now. It's as it is, but it's, but um, yeah, the diesel conversion. I got really sick of all the problems that the four pot petrol had. Um, and we all sorts of idling issues and lumpy running around 2,000 revs, and I just couldn't fix it and got a bit sick of it, and it just got a bit unreliable. And I thought I'm going to do an engine conversion on it and. A looking, everybody does the six pot petrol M50, M52 conversion. I mean, the brilliant engines have been quite a few E30s that have had them conversions and I love them, but I wanted to do something a little bit different. And not a lot of people in the UK stick turbo diesels in E30s. And I've grown up around diesels, living on a farm. Like, I've, always, I've always been messing with tractors and Land Rovers and trucks and stuff like that with my dad. So I thought, put a turbo diesel in it and when I first got it I bought it off one of my friends friends who was also a mountain biker um, and it used to belong to his dad and he got it handed down and he used it for carting bikes around and it had actually broken down up in Scotland he'd got it up to Glentress car park gone out and done a day's riding and got back to it and it wouldn't start and ended up leaving it there um, I was already meant to be buying it off him, um, but he let me have it really cheap, but I had to go get it from Scotland. <laughs> uh, dragged it home, it wasn't running, tried all sorts, and got one of my friends who's not an electrician to come up, and the ECU had actually fried, like one of the big main chips in it had like melted. Um, so I got a new ECU off eBay for 12 quid, and plugged it in, and it started right up. And uh, yeah, got it on the road and daily drove it for about three years. When I first got it was to just get it running and sort of tidy it up a little bit, try and get it clean and like standard looking again and then eventually I ended up 
putting different suspension on it, like some homemade coilovers that I made out of Rally Designs bits, threaded sleeves and Bill Stein shocks, so I could adjust the height and similar on the back, you know, with the little spring perches underneath the springs that are separate on the back of these. Um, yeah, there's, then I wanted some different wheels for it and then I got sick of the engine and then it just sort of turned into this. Well, I originally planned on just doing the engine conversion and driving it about daily like I was doing, but after we'd rebuilt the engine and like we'd, we'd, it wasn't like a full, it was just a cheap rebuild, it was just rerun, new bearings, um, all new seals, everything got blasted and painted up and it looked dead good and I'm like, I can't, can't put that engine in this car looking as it is, I need to, I need to tighten the engine bay up a bit. So started looking at pictures of other people had done for inspiration. Oh, I really like smooth bays and ended up completely stripping the front half of the car, the wings off, everything off, all the interior out, got it up, cut all the bad bits out, welded new in, deleted the battery tray, got, decided to mount the fuse box under the dash, got rid of all that, smoothed it all out. Um, me and my friend pinned a, well, mainly him, only <laughs> helped. Um, did a bit of filler work in the bay to get it all looking really nice and then I decided a new colour and decided to go brown. <laughs> Ended up welding all the floors up, the sills up and it, it just sort of really escalated. Then by the time we'd done that and flipped it round and had, before I knew it, I'd stripped all the under seal off the underneath, welded everything up that looked bad, cutting, cutting sections out and letting new pieces in, not covering anything up, doing a proper job of it. Um, end up stripping all the rubbery under seal off, um, zinc priming it, seam sealing it, then 2K gloss blacking all the underneath everywhere, making sure every seam was watertight and it was all like brand new. Then we painted all the inside, if you lifted the carpet up or took the headliner out, all the inside of the car is the same colour as the outside, put the dash in, got the engine running built all the rear end back up, everything's been powder coated and polybushed. Then when it came to interior, I already had a crack free dash sat waiting for it. The boot build came about, I decided I didn't want my crappy homemade coilovers anymore, I wanted to put it on a decent set of coilovers and then ended up going for air ride. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> um, I love it, I love hard parking it at shows and the just ability to get over speed bumps and all the crap roads around here. If I'd have had it on coilovers and been driving it round at the height I wanted, I'd have ruined the underneath of it. Um, so I do know why. <laughs> I already had a set of E30 Touring Sports levers lined up for it, which I'd re-dyed, which were in it before I took it off the road. But I didn't feel like they were good enough anymore after we'd done the engine bay and um, got the engine bay that well. and the engine we're in, I thought I can't put these seats back in it, I need something a bit nicer to match the exterior of the car. So I ended up going out and buying a set of Recaro LX seats out of a Ford Sierra and then I thought I'm going to get these retrimmed because they were a bit scabby and got on a standard rear bench and I looked for probably about two weeks for a material that I wanted the centres doing. I really wanted black Napa leather bolsters and headrests, but I didn't know what I wanted to put in the middle. And I really like the standard houndstooth check fabric that came on some of the EFERs. Really nice material, so I was looking for something like that, and I came across that houndstooth tweed. Found it on a website, and it said it was Yorkshire tweed that's been produced in a Yorkshire mill, and I was like, it's perfect, it's Yorkshire tweed, it's, that's going in my car, is that? So I bought a roll of it give it to my friend Darren at Buzz Automotive who does retrimming work in Bingley and um, he's done an absolutely amazing job with the seats. I'm really happy with them. And then the boot build, I wanted just something that just sort of shows the compressor and the tanks, wrap the tank in tweed. Um, it's, it's good storage area as well for all the cleaning products that I take to shows and all the spares and tools I take with me when I'm off on a big drive. The shift knobs off. I think it's a Polish eBay seller, and he, he makes 
It makes wooden shift knobs for classic BMW, and I thought it was perfect. It went with the wheel that I'd already got off my friend Matthew, who runs ML Imports in Bradford. He imports quite a lot of parts and uh, JDM cars, and he bought a box of steering wheels, and that were in it. And he sent me a picture and said, this, this looks up your street, do you like it, do you want it? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> it's absolutely perfect, I'll, uh, I'll have that. Then I got the, uh, the knob to match. The headliner is standard headliner board, which I ripped all the old stuff off because the sag, like, I daily drove this for three years with a saggy headliner. <laughs> it was really nice pulling all the old stuff off, scraping all the foam off, and I got some, some nice, it's like, Amphrasite with little holes in, per like some perforated fabric so it looks like it's proper headliner material and uh, retrimmed all that myself. Another cool little bit in the interior that I really like, I've got, um, got a little custom voltmeter, um, I've got the same in my daily um, but I've got temperature probe in that one as well for my oil and I have a friend but he's taking the uh, recycled hazard light switches and polishing them up and putting displays in them for temperature readouts is working on a boost one but in this I've got one of his voltmeters which it just it just looks really OEM and ties in with the rest of the dash really well and I, I quite like that it's another nice little touch that's in there is a Liam Ellis engine that's in the car is from a E34 525 TDS um, I bought that along with the gearbox for it and the diff. The diff is an LSD which has come out of the same car which is a 2.65 or 2.64, I can't remember exactly. Ratio LSD which are on the TDS SE E34s. The gearbox I swapped for a gearbox off an E46 320D because I wanted to have six gears. The ratios, I'm not 100% sure on this but I read online which is why I did it. The ratios are all exactly the same as the gearbox I've replaced, up to fifth, and then sixth is a little bit of an overdrive. So it's been brilliant on motorways. I've really enjoyed driving it about. And it's not that bad on fuel. Quite happy with it. The engine we completely rebuilt and painted up. Like I said earlier, the turbo's completely standard. Um, the management on the engine, I've got rid of the ECU and opted to stick on a manual injection pump, Bosch six cylinder injection pump off a E28 524TD, so they were manually managed. I got that all rebuilt and checked out and all the flows checked on it um, and stuck that on, timed it up and start some runs off the key. The suspension that I ended up eventually putting on the car, I opted for the airlift, full airlift V2 system bought us an entire package, I didn't piece it together or anything. Um, <laughs> bit, of a, bit of a bargain hunter when it came to that one. I, I knew exactly which set I were getting and where we were getting it from and I was waiting for a Black Friday sale. Um, so I think I got like 250 quid off it, which is worth it, every penny counts, doesn't it? Um, the front struts on these, you've got to cut off the leg and weld the airlift um, strut tube to the E30 knuckle um, and the rears are just, you just replace the springs with bags, you've got to cut a little bit off the notch for the springs on the rear arm to get the bag over because the cuts in the bottom of the bag aren't as deep as how much that nub sticks out. Um, managed to hide my controller in the headliner where there'd be a standard diagnostics OBC. Um, panel. I've never had one of them so I thought it'd be right nice to put my little LF controller there so it's nice and hidden and it's up out of the way. I've not got it hanging off wire thrown up passenger seat or thrown in centre console like I've seen before. I don't, don't like that. I think you should try and integrate it somewhere. I've seen people put it in the vents which looks quite smart. Yeah I've got the, got the big tank, I've got the dual compressors, I've managed to hide all the um, manifold and everything under the boot build. Yeah when I came to do the boot build the you've in the back of the 30 Tourings there's some speaker panels and they were quite from throwing bikes in and out and crap and basically just abusing the car for three years um, they were all kicked in and rusty and bent and nasty and didn't 
didn't like them. I, you can't get them new anymore in black. I really want black ones. You can't find any in good condition on eBay. They're all bent or got surface rust on them and like the mesh is all crap. So I, I recently got into 3D printing a little bit, a little bit of a hobby. I'm gonna try and make a little bit of a business out of it, but I thought I'd make some new speaker covers. I uh, do CAD for a living, so it was quite, well, I say quite easy, it sounds a bit big headed, but quite easy for me to model something in and then print it up and trim it up and fit it into the original speaker positions. Quite a few people have asked me about them and I might, might make a few sets to sell. Don't know, <laughs> it's effort. Um, other little bits like I've, once I had the boot building, I realised that you couldn't get to the adjusters for the top of the shocks on the airlift suspension. The You can adjust the dampening on them, there's 32 settings. You can wind them up to be as stiff or as soft as you like. And once the boot builds in, it's probably an hour of a job to take the boot building bits, to take the side panels off, to take, I don't know if you've got to take the seat belts out, but to get your fingers in and adjust the adjusters. So I've got some BC Racing adjuster extensions. Um, machines, machine them out to fit over the top of the airlift knobs and route them up through the boot build, put the caps back on and 3D print some little surrounds for them so they look they look pretty, they don't look out of place. And after the seats have been retrimmed and I got them back, um, there's a few bits missing off them. Um, the, the seats flip forward so they've got the little knobs that stick out the side, it didn't have any of them on. And the adjusters for reclining the seats have got like a centre plastic and all of those were missing when I bought the seats. So I designed and made my own and sanded them up and painted them and they're, they're, they're something else I've 3D printed for the car. Yeah, the paint colour that I opted for is the, it's a BMW colour still that was available from 2012 onwards. You see it on a lot of X5s. I think I've seen like some E91s in this colour and stuff online. It's a BMW Marrakesh Brown paint code B09. <laughs> when I was looking at colours to paint the engine bay, I was looking for something that would try and complement the Lagunda Green, which it was before. So we could paint the engine bay up and then we could try and keep the outside of the car the same and doing the full car. Um, I was, yeah, I was looking online, I thought the brown would go well with the green. I, I, I like the brown that much, decided to do the full car in it. Um, well, I didn't do the paintwork, my friend did the paintwork. I helped with the prep, like, and I built the paint booth. My friend's done all the paintwork on it, and he's really fucking proud of it, and I don't think he gets enough credit. <laughs> but he won't come to car shows, so no one can tell him how good he's done. It all has to come back through me. <laughs> yeah, after I chose the brown, uh, my friend Pinder had helped me sort out all the engine bay and everything, the engine bay were painted. I like the colour that much. Um, we decided to do absolutely everything, the entire car in the brown, basically. Um, I'd gone a bit overboard by then because I'd already already looked at getting the seats and I'd already bought the suspension and it just turned into a massive project rather than just sticking a diesel engine in my E30. Um, went out and found a nicer bonnet found a nicer set of bumpers, bought a brand new set of wings from BMW, a brand new Valance and a brand new boot lid, because the boot lid's on these E30 Tourings, rocked from the inside out, every single corner goes on them, they're quite nasty. But no, brand new panels from BMW aren't too expensive, it's worth doing, because we'd already started doing everything else, so I was quite happy to spend a bit more and do it all properly. The Paintwork couldn't have turned out better. I'm really, really happy with it. All the prep work's been done in the barn where the car were built, and then when it come to paint it, we sort of tried to create a bit of a dust-free environment with extraction and everything. Ended up building like a bit of a polytunnel style. Um, people keep calling it the murder room because it's it's just the floor's painted and it's all made out of a poly sheet and wood, and the car lives in there now. I re-glassed all my headlights and fog lights, got new lenses for the indicators, installed crosshair kits, 
Um, got a front front lip and splitter from Riga in Germany. Um, <laughs> actually didn't didn't want that bit at first, but I accidentally bought that bit instead of that bit, and then went back and bought that. <laughs> so I ended up with both. Um, but I don't think it would look right without both now. I'm really happy with how it's turned out. I wasn't going to put American side markers in it, but these brand new from BMW without the side marker holes are like, I think they're like nearly 100 quid a corner, but with the side marker holes, they're only like 25 quid each. So I thought, oh, I'll, uh, I'll get them and I'll get some American spec side markers and see how it looks and managed to get the side marks off a guy in the UK for like 30 quid for the full set and it's it's turned out really well, I quite like it because you couldn't get Tourings in America so you, and you don't ever see a E30 Touring with American spec side markers so I think it's a little bit different um, The wheels I had custom made to specs I'd chosen by a company called Extreme Offset Wheels you tell them what diameter, what width, um, centre bar, stud pattern, everything you want, and what style. I think they offer eight, eight different designs of steel wheel, and um, they basically get you made exactly what you want, so you can try and achieve the fitment that you want without having to use any spaces or muck about. I found a car online which had what I was going for and pretty much nicked their specs. <laughs> Um, and it's worked out all right. <laughs> yeah, the the exhaust system that's on it, uh, we made ourselves. Uh, we've gone out of the back of the standard E34 turbo. Um, so the E34 is top mounted, and it's come straight out the back of that, and then gone straight into a cone and straight into three inch, and then we've pie sliced. Um, down around the manifold, around the steering linkage, and underneath down the side of the gearbox. Um, that took you know, that took us a full weekend to cut and position and tack. Uh, had a lot of help. Well, it pretty much did all of it. I, I only cut the bits, but a lot of help with that from my friend Russell, who's he does TIG welding for a living. He's really good. You see his welds in the pictures and love the little bits of videos that you do. And then we've gone all the way to the back of the car boxes and a silencer um, straight out the back i've kept kept the small exhaust hole well exhaust cut out in the river lance which is what the four pot engine for is had the six pot ones had a had a wider hole for the twin tip exhausts so i've kept the smaller hole and just gone out with a single single three inch with a roll tip <laughs> it's drastically different i don't think it could be any more different i literally just started out planning to do an engine conversion to get rid of the little four pot that were in it and it's turned into turned into this which I'm quite proud of <laughs> parts for these uh, and most classic BMWs are really easy to get hold of from main dealer BMW are really good at providing bits for the older cars um, loads of eBay sellers as well breakers yards um, stuff to get bits. I'm um, in all E30 Facebook groups, E30 Zone's a good one. I, I love it on there that everybody's so helpful and there's some good lads on there that break cars and everybody's really good with advice and everything. Other bits that you can't really get from the dealers like the headlight glass and the fog light glass and stuff. There's eBay sellers and stuff that are making reproduction parts. The new windscreen, that's that were easy to pick up. There's loads of brand new windscreens and stuff on eBay. Time to do it all. It's, I'd have liked to get it all done a lot faster, but it, it's like holding, holding back as well from doing stuff. It's like, don't like doing half a job. Like, if I'm doing something, I like to do it right and take my time over it. And stuff just ends up taking so much longer than what you first thought and what you set out to do. Like originally planned to have the whole thing done in a year and it took four and a half years. <laughs> you just end up going overboard. That's probably been the hardest bit. Was a daily driver and then its purpose was to be a project and now it's just a bit of a show pony. 
Um, all I've done since it's been done, like any time I've driven it, is literally just to take it to shows. I want to get out in it a bit more, but <laughs> when you've put so much time and effort into something, it comes a bit becomes a bit precious, and I'm a bit precious. I'm, I'm in at that stage at the minute where I'm a bit precious over it, and I don't want to leave it anywhere. I'm absolutely terrified of parking it up somewhere and anything happening to it. <laughs> but yeah, I'll get over it one day. Biggest achievement since it's been finished is um, literally the day after it finished, took it to the Fuel Society show at Harewood Hill Climb. And obviously we'd, we'd like literally just, like I saved the badges, these till absolute last. I'm like, I had them on the shelf and I'm like, they're, they're gonna be the last thing that goes on. It's gonna be like, right, satisfying. Four and a half years, badges on, cars done. Um, put the badges on at about half two in the morning on a Saturday night and the show was at nine and I, I've already bought my ticket and stuff thinking I'd have it finished but they were a bit close and we ended up loading it on the trailer early that morning and took it there and loaded it in the field, drove it in and I got there and I said oh really happy that you've made it, didn't, didn't know if you'd make it when we looked through your Instagram um, <laughs> which is understandable it like had just been painted and uh, yeah it ended up winning best in show which it was all still so fresh then and we'd spent like hours cleaning polish off it and storage dust and stuff once we'd got it parked up at the show because we didn't have time to clean it before we took it <laughs> and uh, that, that were amazing like just to win best in shows ace i'm really happy with that wasn't expecting to win anything i was really happy just to get it there like a, a week or two after that, I managed to uh, managed to get it taxed and insured. I managed to get it out for an MOT. <laughs> the day before its MOT, the steering rack leaked everywhere because I'd bought a second-hand E46 purple tag rack for it off eBay. And I think I must have got a bit of a dodgy seller or bad luck or something because it was filling the boot up. And I hadn't realised I'd driven it about for a bit, not knowing that all this steering fluid was filling the boots up. I went full lock in the barn and I just heard this pop. <laughs> There's steering fluid everywhere. And I had MOT booked in for next day. And then booked a day off work, managed to go out and buy a brand new steering rack, got an MOT, fit it, got an MOT. And then that weekend, like literally next day, took it to Fitted UK. And it came in top 25 in that, which we're really happy about. That's an absolutely massive show. It's the first car that I've ever had that I've really enjoyed working on. I, mean, I, I waited and managed to get exactly what I want, and it's it's I don't know, it's the first car I've I don't know, it's the first car I've really been passionate about, and it's you know I've had it for a while now. Don't think I'll ever get rid of it. <laughs> oh, I feel really nervous driving it about, to be honest. Um, I had some really good reactions off people, like um, people people telling me I should be really proud of it. It's come out amazing, and oh, it's cleanest EFA I've ever seen. Well done, like, and I, I, I've. It's hard for us to see that because I've seen it for. I could pick out a hundred little flaws with it that I'm not happy with because I've spent so much time with it for the last four and a half years I can go around and pick loads of little bits out that I'm not happy with it. Like, it's had really good reactions. There's been a couple of negative ones, but they're just like YouTube comments in previous videos, but you just laugh at them. Um, I've, I've not really had a top speed out of it. I've, uh, it just sort of gets trundled about at 70 miles an hour up and down motorway to shows. I've no idea what miles per gallon it's doing, but it's doing better than my daily, which has the same engine conversion. Sort of, for an idea of power and torque, my daily's been on a rolling road, that's the same engine setup. It's not got the same fuel pump, so it's probably not that accurate. Um, but that's doing 360 newton meters of torque, and it's 184 brake. At the minute, I've got another one of these, another E30 Touring, which I did actually manage to just put an engine in and drive daily, my red one. Um, I've put some BC racing coilovers on it and different wheels and stuff like that, but you've got to do stuff like that, yeah. Um, I'm just tidying that up a bit. It's not going to turn into this. 
Um, but yeah, just tidying that up. And then after that, I've got a full six speed um, RX8 drivetrain. Got the LSD six speed box and a engine out of a Renesis, um, not out of a P. Z edition RX8, the 230 brake one, and um, I'd really, really like to put that in something like a Morris Minor or a Morris Minor Traveller or something like that. Just, just something a bit of fun. Maybe do like some hill climbs in it, like um, retro rides, hill climb and stuff like that. Just, just something to crash about in. Something fun that I'm not going to be too precious over. Um, there's another project on the farm as well. The guy who did my paint, Pinder, he's. Um, Making, he's building a fully drift spec uh, S14 with wide angle lock. He's smoothed, he's tubbed and smoothed all the bay, um, bolting cage, and he's made his own wide arch kit for it, which looks really good. It really follows the lines of the car, and it looks spot on. That's that's the next thing that's going to be that's going to be coming off the farm. That's gonna that's going to be going around and doing some shows next year. I've I've helped with that a little bit where I could. I couldn't have got it to this standard or done this, you know, got it looking like this or even won any shows or anything like that without any of my mates that have helped help do it. Like Darren, who's done the interior, my friend Jed, who helped detail it at shows, um, my friend Pinder, who's done all the paint work on it and helped so much with the body work, like the lining shut gaps and just all the paint work. <laughs> been done by him it's it's come out really well my uh my dad for helping me rebuild the engine and time it up and stuff like that i hadn't rebuilt an engine before but i learned a lot doing it um he's also let me have all, all his workspace on the farm I've took up one of his units for like four and a half years which is really good of him and he's let me have one, big space in the back shed to build a paint booth to do the paint work and that's where it lives now so couldn't have done any of that without any of them and Russell that's helped me with all the welding work on the exhaust how it's come out all together like it's just all everything has just come together and worked really well I'm quite proud of the overall finish of it 